Hey, good morning. Hope everyone's having a wonderful day this morning. It's a beautiful Sunday morning, and we are blessed with a multitude of mosquitoes out here. So I hope uh, whatever eats them will get a belly full today because they're definitely getting a belly full of our blood. So we got uh, two thermocells and spray going. But anyway, I um, want to talk to you about something that's been on my heart. I'm going to wait just a moment and see who signs on, make sure this thing's working. Um, had this on my heart for two weeks, and it's been kind of a battle. Uh, it's a battle this morning. I, I know the enemy doesn't want this message to get out, but uh, I want to talk to you about Hell's Most Wanted. And um, I think this will encourage someone. I think it's going to warn some people, and I think it's going to open your eyes to what's really going on. And uh, I want to read to you. I was trying to find it in my Bible, and uh, but I got it wrote down in these notes here, so I think I'll just read from here. But I want to wait again to see who's going to sign on. Thank you for joining the Church in the Woods. Thank you for being a part of this ministry. Thank you for the donations. We've received donations at realworldoutdoors.com. Thank you for all those that give. Everything you give goes 100% to the ministry and what we're trying to do to reach the lost and encourage the church and to help the poor. So uh, I just want to thank you for that. If you got your Bibles this morning and you want to turn along with me, turn to 1 Peter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. I want to read something to you that uh, the Lord has laid on my heart. Again, let us know where you're watching from. I ask you every time. Let me know where you're at. Uh, share this. Tag a friend. Let me know where you're at. We love to see all different places we're reaching, and uh, it helps get the word out. 1 Peter 5, verse 8. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, is as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking who he may devour. You're being watched today. You've got someone stalking you and they're watching you. And what he's watching is he's looking for a way in, a way to, to break you down, a way to tear you down, tear your family down, tear, tear your witness down, to destroy your testimony. That's I'm talking to Christians today. You are being watched. And hell's most wanted. The reason that title just came to me, I was eating with a preacher this week and he made the comment. He said, I would, I'd like to be hell's most wanted. In other words, um, I want to do so much for the kingdom of God that there there is an uh, actual picture of me, hell's most wanted. And I understand that mentality. We want to be fighters. We want to be warriors. But make no mistake about it. We are hell's most wanted. Not only our, our, our lost souls, which are definitely what Satan is after. He's wanting to kill, steal, and destroy. He's wanting to take as many souls to hell with him as he can to hurt God. But make no mistake, you are still wanted. There's a bullseye on your back. You're a target. And when you become a child of God, that bullseye only gets bigger. And Satan would love nothing more than to destroy you and to take you down. Satan, uh, and in Luke, the 22nd chapter, Jesus told Peter, he said, Satan has desired to sift you as wheat. And that word sift means to separate. He wants to take you away, to set you apart so he can make you feel hopeless and fearful and worried. And I experienced that firsthand. I know how that feels. I know people that go through that. The enemy's very good at making you feel isolated and alone. That's his first tactic. The first thing he'll do in your life is to make you feel isolated and alone. And a lot of times through temptations or through things that are going on in our lives, he'll get us to a place covertly that we are, are separated and we don't even know that we played a party and that we just wake up one morning like, where's everybody at? Why, don't, why aren't my friends calling me? Why, why, ain't, why ain't churches calling me to preach? Or, or why don't I have uh, Bible study anymore with these guys or, or, or whatever? Most of the time, it's because the enemy has worked in your life for a while, so he's got you to a place where he, his, he sprung his trap. He set his trap down the road, and you walked into it. He says, a roaring lion. A lion roars at their prey to, to, to intimidate, to, to, to freeze up. And so when everything else runs away, that prey is isolated and froze, can't move. And that's exactly what Satan wants. He wants you to be isolated and froze up. And he's come to seek you out. He's come to destroy you. I was reading uh, in, in study of this, and I was reading in Daniel. The Lord laid on me Daniel, how he was praying for 21 days. He was fasting. And, and all of a sudden, an angelic being, I believe it was Gabriel, appeared to him. And when he appeared to him, he, he was greatly afraid. The man's face or the angel's face was like lightning and his eyes was as flames of fire and his voice was as thunder. And when he was talking to him, he said, hey, Daniel, greatly beloved, I heard, we, we heard your prayer the first day you prayed it. 
but the prince of Persia, which is Satan, stood against me from coming and delivering the answer to your prayer, the vision. But Michael, the archangel, came and helped me overcome, and I've come to you. Your prayer was heard the first day. The greatest battles we face as children of God is our prayer life. Talk about being isolated and alone. When we don't spend time with God, preachers, when we don't spend time with God, Christians, we get isolated. We get isolated in our own selves, our own emotions, our own feelings, our own hopelessness, our own it's I, I, I. It's about what, what do I do? How do I overcome? How can I keep serving? You can't. That's why the Spirit of God comes to live within a believer. And when we pray and spend time with God, hell's afraid. You become even more of hell's most wanted when you're praying and you're seeking God's power because the enemy knows that the power of God in you is greater than any power in this world. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in this world. Jesus made us more than conquerors through the Holy Spirit of God. Now, make no mistake about this. You can say, well, you know, I'm not comfortable with what you're saying. I don't want the demonic activity in my life. I don't want evil spirits to, to know who I am. You need to understand something. Nobody is safe. There's no such thing as a sideline in the in the game of, of ministry or the game of this life while we're living. There's no sideline. There's either you're either playing or you're down and out. He's coming to get you. He's coming to put you out. He's coming to take you down, or you're going to be in the battle. There is no sideline. You can't sit there and not be hindered and not be bothered. The Bible says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought into the obedience of Christ. The enemy attacks our mind. Hell's most wanted. When, he, when, they, when they raise your picture up and say, okay, that's the one we're going after today. We're really going to focus hard on this one today. This one's doing a lot. This one's making a difference. This one's reaching some lost people. First thing they do is start attacking your mind. Who's they? Evil spirits. The enemy. They come and attack you through your feelings. They want you to feel like, hey, you know what? You're wasting your time. What are you doing? Nobody cares. Nobody, nobody even likes you. That's exactly what they tell me all the time. And some of that may be true, but here's the, bottom, here's the bottom line. God loves me. God called me. God set me apart. God filled me with his spirit. God wants me to do this ministry in the woods that I would have never thought I would be, never even dreamed this would be what I would, I would be doing. And here's the deal. God has a plan for your life. He has a purpose. He has a dedicated, set-apart thing that only you can do. Nobody else that he's called to do that will be able to do it like you. Why? Because you're different. You're unique. You're different. You're different than everyone else. We all are. And God loves you and his hands upon you if you're a child of God. And you need to know this. God wants to magnify himself through you. He wants to glorify himself through you. Whatever you do, when you serve God and, and, and you glorify him and his holiness and his his character, God will work through your life. Hell's most wanted are those that are out there making a difference. Hell's most wanted are your lost loved ones, the ones that have no hope. Hell, and I, I know this is not a popular subject, but hell reaches for your lost loved ones. Do you understand what I'm saying? Hell salivates, drools to destroy your family to destroy your life. When you do drugs, when you do, when you sin and do those things that you know are opening doors, pornography, music, there's some music people listen to, whatever it may be, hell salivates. Demonic entities are real today, y'all. They're real. And when, if you don't, if you choose to ignore this, it'll be at your own peril. They know who you are. They are watching you. And what they want to do is kill, steal, and destroy. And you can hide you can think you're hid. You cannot get involved in the, in, in, in the work of God, but they're still coming, and you're still going to have to do battle. And the best thing to do is square your shoulders and say, you know what? I know I'm not big enough. I know I'm not strong enough. I know I can't, I'm, I'm too weak. But the Bible tells me that when I'm weak, hallelujah, then I'm strong. When I show up strong on, and I think I've got it together, I am nothing. I have no strength. I have no power. God has made it to where when we're broke down, we're beat down. The Bible says a just man falls seven times and rises again. When we get down and we fall down, God 
can then raise us up and put his power in us and use us because we're not prideful anymore. We're not depending on our own strength and our own power. I'm not worried about what I'm going to say when I come down in the woods. I just know God's going to show up and God's going to do it because God has a plan. My plan, my purpose is to be obedient to that plan, to serve him the way he wants me to serve him. And that's the same for you. Hell's most wanted. We should be the kind of people I heard one man say or one woman say, when we wake up, they go, oh no, let's get ready. They're up. He's up. She's up. Get Man your battle stations. Get ready. They're going to make a difference today. There's somebody that God is going to put them in contact today. The enemy can look at our lives and he can look at what God's doing. And he can tell that God is using you. He can tell God has got a plan and a purpose and God is going to try to impact someone today. And so he'll try to discourage that. He'll try to stop that. You'll wake up sometimes and you say, I don't want to meet nobody. I don't want to talk to nobody. I don't want to tell nobody about Jesus. I'm, I'm mad at God today because of the way things are in my life, whatever the case may be. But that's the day, hallelujah, that somebody's going to come by you. They may be suicidal. They may be in deep, deep suffering somehow, and they need a word of encouragement. They need to hear from God, not you, but God. And so if we're faithful and we walk in obedience, that door open. <clears throat> the enemy tells us, or excuse me, the Bible tells us that Satan is constantly accusing us constantly accusing you before God. The Bible says, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before God day and night. And they overcome him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. That's in Revelations. Listen to me. Every day of your life, Satan is accusing you to God. Look, look at this person. Look at that lady. Why did you save her? She's not faithful. Look at that man. He's a loser. You should have never done that. They don't honor you. They disrespect you. They're not you. How do you glorify through them? How, how do you use them? They're not worth it. Every day, every day, God has to hear this, accusing me. Look, look what David done. Look what he done last night. Look what he's thinking. Look what's going on in his life. Look what he may do tomorrow. You can't trust him. Every day, put your own self in that place. Every day, the enemy's accusing you to God. But you know what God is doing? God is smiling because he sent his son, Jesus Christ, 2,000 years ago to go to a cross, to hang there and bleed. And all that precious holy blood that flowed out of our Savior covers all my sin, past, present, and future. And when he hung on that cross, I was on his mind. You were on his mind. He knew exactly what he was doing. He knew that we had broken the law. He knew that we had offended God. He knew that we were separated from God. He knew there was nothing we could do to justify ourselves to God. But he did it because he loves us today. The Bible says that Jesus said he had the power to lay his life down and the power to take it up. Nobody took his life, especially the enemy. God laid his life down for you and I so we could be justified, so we could be set apart, so we could be holy in God's eyes. So God smiles and he says, you know what? When they mess up, when they do something they shouldn't do, I'm faithful and just to forgive their sins. If they repent, I'll cleanse them from any and all unrighteousness. And I am still glorified because of what my son done on the cross. He dealt with their sin. He's dealing with it today. And there's coming a day, Satan, when you're going to be cast down. You're going to be put down and you're going to be cast into the hell. You're going to be set into the lake of fire. And somewhere in the Bible, gosh, I wish I knew where it was. It says we'll walk by him and shake our heads and go, is this really the one that caused all this? Really? We have power, y'all. We're set apart. We're hell's most wanted because we're on the front lines making a difference. That line's roaring, just roaring, trying to intimidate, but he has no teeth. His teeth was took at the cross. There, there's nothing he can, he can't even touch a hair on your head. When that, when Peter, when Jesus told Peter, he said, Satan wishes to sift you as wheat. He didn't say, hey, I, I can't control this situation. Watch out, Peter. He says, Peter, Satan has desired to sift you as wheat. In other words, Satan can't touch a hair on your head unless God, what, allows it. And there's a reason for it. Oh, man, I wish you felt what I felt right now. There's nothing I can do to make myself big and strong or powerful but one thing, humble myself under the hand of God through prayer and fasting as Daniel did and wait on God to exalt me by his Holy Spirit. When we are weak, then we are strong. 
when a lion roars at someone, the Satan roars, that spirit of fear that you have when you hear that roar from the doctor that says, hey, it could be terminal, or hey, you ain't got money for the bill tomorrow, or hey, that family men are so family family members so addicted they'll never they'll never get over it. God specializes in the supernatural. The supernatural is the norm to God. It's anything too hard for him. He's able to do all things exceedingly and abundantly more than we ever ask or think. In other words, even our imaginations, he can do more than you can imagine. Don't ever doubt his power. Don't ever doubt his sovereignty. Don't ever doubt his holiness and his presence to overcome and do whatever needs to be done in your life. I don't want to miss anything because I, I know I get fired up sometimes. So I want to I want to tell you, when you feel that spirit of fear coming, and I wrote this down, understand God did not give you that spirit of fear. That is the enemy, that he's roaring in your life. You may wake up with anxiety. I, I have anxiety. People have anxiety. I have anxiety over this, these mosquitoes out here. Anxiety, okay? I get anxiety. You know, if you knew the battle we face coming out here to do this video, if you knew the, me running around on the, out here and, and, and what am I going to do? What am I going to go live? And Beverly's like, calm down. Calm down. You know why? Fear. 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 God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power. Now listen, he could have stopped right there. I ain't giving you that spirit of fear. What's wrong with you? God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. The greatest encounter I ever had with the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, was January 18, 2003 on a golf course on hole number 15. The love that I felt, the power of that love changed my life. Love is the greatest thing. It's the greatest power. The enemy cannot do a thing with love. He can't go around it. He can't over, go over it. He can't go under it. He can't go through it because the Bible says God is love. Love is the greatest thing. It's the greatest arsenal. It's the greatest weapon. How do we get that love? Prayer, spending time with God as a child of God. I just want more of you, Lord. I don't, I don't need the new car. I don't, I, don't, I don't need all this, but I just want more of you. When we ask God for more of him, that pleases him because that's what he wants us to have. He's the greatest thing. There is nothing greater we could ask for than more of God. The thief cometh to kill, steal, and destroy. But I am come that they may have life, and they may have it more abundantly. That's what Jesus said. Jesus wants you to be filled with his spirit. He wants you to live an abundant life. Matthew 7 tells us, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and him that knocketh it shall be opened. Or what man is there who, if his son asks bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give you good things to them that ask of him? I want more of God's Spirit. I want more of his power. That's what's going to make a difference in our country. That's what's going to make a difference in your family. That's what's going to make a difference in your community. God's presence, his power, his love. I can't win one person to Christ if I don't have love. I can't do anything apart from God's presence. But if we preach the gospel and we share the word of God in the love of Christ that we don't have, but it's an agape love. It's a love that God has. A God that bestows into us as we're children of God. He sheds the love of God. The Holy Spirit sheds the love in us. We can overcome anything, y'all. We can overcome our differences. We can overcome bitterness. We can overcome problems. But the enemy, if those problems are fires, little fires here, little fire of bitterness here, little fire of uh, this person hurt my feeling here, a little fire of unforgiveness here, the enemy's pouring gas on that fire. And it's through fear, jealousy, rage, hate, anger, malice. But to quench that, or to blood out of way, is the fire of God. That's love and power and holiness and truth and great glory and belonging. Don't you want to belong? Don't you want to know without a shadow of a doubt that if you lay your head down tonight and you don't wake up, you're going to be with God in heaven? Or if you don't take another breath, you're good. You can have that assurance today. You can have that. 
God does not want you to be fearful. He doesn't want you to wonder if you're saved and to walk around going, I hope I am. I think I am. He wants you to know it. And the way he shows you and that you know it is his spirit bears witness with you. When you're born again, God's Holy Spirit comes to live within you. You can't be the same and meet God. These people that say, well, I got saved on such and such day, but there's no change in their life. Or they, they know there's no change. That's, I question that. God has a plan for you. You are hell's most wanted. Someone watching, you are hell's most wanted right now. There's a, there's a contract out on you. He wants to take you down. He wants to take your family down. He wants to lock you in the prison of your mind, the prison of anxiety and depression. He wants to destroy you so you can't help nobody else. Break out. Break loose from that. Break through in prayer. God, fill me with the Holy Spirit. God, I don't feel you. I don't even know if you're listening. Nope, I take that back. You, you are listening because I'm your child. The enemy don't want me to believe it. I'm going to praise you anyway. And guess what, devil? If you want to stay around me, you're going to listen to me praise the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, seated on the right hand of glory, who loved me and gave himself for me. Maybe you need to hear some praise and worship, devil. So just hang around. I'm going to praise God today. I promise you, my friend, in the dark, in these woods where I pray, I have demonic things come around me. I, I, I believe I almost could see it. And so I'll start praising God and a coldness, a coldness will come and a fear. But when I praise God, it leaves. It gets brighter. It gets more. It's not heavy anymore. And a power comes. And I feel like, my friend, if somebody was out there watching me, you'd probably laugh. I feel like I could just stomp around in them woods and say, I'm a child of the king. There ain't nothing can touch me because he's got his hand on me. That's what God wants us to have, that victory, that boldness, and it only comes through his presence, the spirit of the living God. If you don't know that today, if you don't have that today, right where you're at, and you know that God is dealing with you, you know without a shadow of a doubt, I don't have to tell you you're lost. I don't have to tell you you're not saved. You know it. You violated the law of God. You say, well, what do you mean? Well, have you ever told a lie? If you, have you ever stole anything? Have you, ever, have you ever murdered anyone? You know, a lot of people say, no, I've never. Yeah, we murder people with our tongue all the time, gossiping, putting people down. You ever commit adultery, lusting after someone? Jesus said to lust, is, you might, it's as bad as it's the real thing. If you lust, you've committed adultery in your heart. There's nobody that is without sin, my friend. And on God's law that he passed, the Ten Commandments and all the laws of Moses, we couldn't keep none of that. That's why Christ came. So you could have forgiveness. Now, if you're condemned right now, if the Spirit of God is convicting you of your sins and you know you're lost, right where you're at, repent, turn. How do you do that? Right here. And you say, Lord, forgive me. I'm a sinner. I know I'm a sinner. I know that this cr crazy guy in the woods that you put out there, he was speaking, I'm hell's most wanted. If I take my last breath, if my heartbeat stops, hell will be my home. I don't want that to happen. God let them sense the fear of, of being separated. That's the fear you need to understand, the eternal separation of God. Nothing good is apart from God. Hell, there's nothing good there. It's not a big party. People ain't walking around with a, a light ball hanging, a disco ball, hey, we're in hell. It's darkness, outer darkness, weeping and gnashing of teeth, a place of separation where you're never thought about anymore. You're separated from God. You say, how do I avoid that place? Jesus. That's why he came, y'all. That's, that's why there's no other religion out there. There's no other way. People say, why can't we just all get along? Why can't we just, you know, I don't want to talk about that religion. I don't want to put them down. What are you talking about? There is no other way. This ain't a game. It ain't about, well, I don't want to offend anybody. It's like you're going to die and go to hell if you don't get saved. And I care enough about you to tell you the truth. Don't go there. Don't go. God, it was, a, it was bad enough that God said, I'm coming down and doing something about it. And the very ones that I'm coming to save will hate me. They'll pluck my beard out. They'll spit on me. They'll laugh at me. They'll mock me. Even my disciples will turn on me, but I love them anyway. And I want them to be with me. God loves you exactly the same way. I don't care how bad a sinner you are. God loves you. Right where you're at, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me, Lord. Fall down on your face. Wherever you're at, Lord, forgive me. Save my soul. I believe Jesus died for me. I believe when he hung on the cross, it was for me personally. I believe when his blood was running out of his body and falling all over the ground, 
that God was saying, I'm giving them my righteousness and I'm putting my sin upon him and that blood, holy blood, cleansing me from all my sin. I believe he died in my place. I should have been there. I deserved it. I don't I don't deserve anything. But when I died when he died, God raised him up the third day. And that same resurrection power has come to me today and said, It's time. Your hell's most wanted. You need to make a difference. You need to make a decision today. God save me. That's the most powerful thing you ever say. Lord, save me. If you've made this decision, this ain't about numbers. This ain't, not, this ain't no game to me now. If you've made a decision and you've called out to Jesus or you call out to Jesus after watching this video, maybe later when we ain't live, you could be hell's most wanted. I know you are because this message is for you. And you say, I am just one. How do you do that? Just type it in. I am just one. I'm that just one. I'm hell's most wanted. When you type in, I am just one, what that does is two things. First of all, it makes it public. Everybody that knows you sees it. What are you talking about, you're just one? Tell them, witness, God saved me. I give my heart to Christ today. I received Jesus Christ today. I ask forgiveness of my sins. I believed on I accepted the free gift of salvation. I don't have to go to hell. I don't have to live alone. I don't have to, I don't have to be separated from God. That was a choice I was making. Now I've made a choice. No, I don't want that life because the Spirit of God has come to me and saved me. I believe in Jesus, and he loves me. I am just one. Makes it public. And number two, it shows us who you are, and we'll message you, and we'll get in contact with you to send you some stuff, some information, and some things that will help you get started on your Christian walk. And then follow Church in the Woods. That's, that's really what this is about. This is to help people that don't go to church, can't go to church, and those that are on their way to church. They want to hear a, maybe there's something here that blesses you too. I'm not in competition with nobody. We're not trying to, to compete. I just want to see people saved, and I want to see people encouraged, and I want to see God glorified. Let us know where you've watched from. Let us know who you are. If you've received Christ today, if you made a decision, type in, I am just one, and let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in his sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer, in Jesus' name, amen.